the Rust community likes to claim that uh, there is no uh, void or null or nil or any other sort of like doesn't exist type. Um, but then at the same time, we have these option types which allow us to basically have the same thing. So it might feel like the Rust community is just, you know, saying, yeah, we don't have that, but then, you know, silently slinking over to the side and then having it anyways. Um, there is a subtle difference between like actually having a null uh, and then having a like having an option which can fulfill the same thing. And it really all comes down to how the compile how the compiler handles it. Because if the compiler handles null, then yeah, you basically have the same functionality than that um, what Rust does. But let's go into what Rust does so you can evaluate other languages and see whether or not it does the same thing behind the scenes or if it doesn't. So options are essentially are it has something or it doesn't have something. Let's go ahead and create sort of like a hello name function. So we're gonna do a function, uh, hello. We're gonna take in a name, which let's just start off the bat with is, is a stir. And we're gonna return a, a string. Um, okay, so if we say this string here, we're just gonna do format. And this format is going to say hello and then the name. OK, and return that and then up here we can debug the result of this out. So we can just say debug and hello and then we're going to pass in some name. So let's just do like Brooks. Now, if I run this, it works exactly as we expect here. We see hello Brooks printed out. Great. Now, what if, for example, we don't have a name and we want something else to happen in case, you know, we, we want like a format here to say, well, if there is no name, then we do something else instead. Normally we'd be able to say, you know what? Hello and like null or nil or void, but Rust doesn't allow that. If I say that it takes in a stir, it has to take in a stir. Um, that's where options come in. So an option allows me to come down here to the hello function and say, you know what? Name is going to be an option. And inside of that option is going to be a stir. Now, not sort of like explicitly shown here is that option is really just an enum with two potentially different arms to it. On one side, we have, well, the thing that's in there, something that's gonna be a, a stir, but then there could be nothing. Well, if there's nothing, then we now have to handle that. So let's go ahead and say here and do a sum and just say Brooks again. And we're good again here, but now this name option doesn't implement display. So how do I actually extract this out? Uh, there's a couple different ways. Um, we can uh, we can do like an if let is like is is um, it was the first like mistake that I made when I was trying to learn Rust is I was like hey, let me do an if statement. And I did if let if let is all about extracting from enums specifically options. Um, now there, you could do it for other types of enums too, um, but like the way you're taught first is that. So let's do that first. We'll say, well, it can be something, right? Uh, okay, so if let sum, if it's a sum, then I want a variable here. So we'll just do name. I can shadow this name to this one equals our name. And we see Rust Analyzer here is telling us Hey, I know that this is a stir because it is this thing right here. So if it is that, then there we go. Handle like extract this out. And we have this big error. What's happening here? Um, oh, if maybe missing an else clause, if expressions without else evaluate to just nothing. Well, 
what's happening here is that I'm telling it that it has to return a string. And so this is where uh, the null handling or the none option is really, really great because the REST compiler will not allow me to basically write code that can possibly fail here. If I pass in a none, which is perfectly legal, I could replace this with just a none here. This code won't run, right? Because name doesn't have a something in it. It's a none. Well, what happens then? I don't return anything which is invalid according to the string. So I could return an option here, um, or we can put like an else here and then handle this and say, okay, well, okay, well, let's, let's format uh, and we'll just say, you need to um, give me, or maybe it's probably just like hello, hello world or something like that. Hello, un, um, hello stranger, hello. hello stranger. And now we're happy again. Although you're, you don't feel that you need to be because it's gonna be just a two string. Um, and so, uh, hello stranger is perfectly valid here because I'm saying, hey, if it is something, then do this. If it is nothing, do this. And so that's what we mean when we say that uh, there is no null in Rust. It, it, it kind of is a null, but it's more of that the compiler forces us to handle it in 100% of the situations that were there. Now there's more than one way for us to handle this. The if let sum is one of the ways. Um, you can also do if let none. Um, we can do return early and not have an else. Regardless, it's still going to force us, like the compiler is still gonna force us to handle it in, in some way. So the other common way of doing, uh, of handling an option is to use a match statement. So we have it let sum here. And then we can have a match. Uh, so I can match name. And then uh, I'm using Rust Analyzer with VS Code here. So I'm just doing control dot. It's saying, hey, fill match arms. I hit return. And here we see what the options are. Uh, some and none. So if it is something, I can take what this is. And then we can just handle this, which is going to be this format. That goes here. Uh, and if it's this none, I really want this to happen. Now notice, I don't have a semicolon here and like this just works. Well, it's because this block, if it's one of these, it can only be one of these at a time. So if it is this sum, then this returns to the match, which then returns out of the hello to this code. So uh, it like this is still valid and it's very similar to what this was. In fact, this returned to the if let, which then returned out to. Um, if I put semicolons on it, it wouldn't work anymore because it's not actually able to return out. And this is how we can basically have not what well, not have a null type, but still have a null type, if you get what I mean. Um, and so if you need to be able to basically sometimes say, well, I don't have anything at all, the option type is where you want to go. I've noticed that this can be really, really helpful when returning something. Also, uh, you can basically say, hey, if um, if I don't have something come in, so let's, let's try this. Let's come back to here. I'm going to do an option with this string inside. And I'm going to say, okay, if if there is something in here, extract it out. Uh, okay, so I get that. I don't want this uh, in this else. I just want to return nothing in the case that it is something. Uh, okay, so I could just do else return a none. Uh, and then this one is going to return a sum with the format inside. Okay, this is fine. Uh, manual. Um, oh, well, Clippy is unhappy because it wants me to do a little bit more of an advanced thing with this option. Let's see if we can have it auto replace this. So I do that. Okay, so it takes this name and it's going to map. 
So options have a lot of really cool things, uh, methods that we can use on it. In fact, it doesn't even like this as much. We can, well, okay, it does like this as much. Uh, okay, so map is gonna go map through, well, the option, right? The sum and the none. If it's a sum, we're gonna take this thing in here and we're gonna return this. If it's a none, it's just gonna return a none straight on through. So it's a way for us to sort of like update what it is. And then we're gonna return whatever this thing is. So if it was a none, a none gets returned. If it's a sum, a sum gets returned. Great. Now here we have to handle this because if I try to run debug, I mean, it works, but we see hello none is this none. And if we pass in a sum, Brooks again, we see that we're actually printing out this sum hello Brooks. Well, what if I don't want that anymore? Well, uh, there's a couple ways to handle that. I could do that entire match or the if let again, or I can just unwrap this. Now unwrapping, is dangerous. Uh, what are you upset about? Uh, I don't want to unwrap here. I want to unwrap here. So I want to unwrap on the result of the hello call. Um, now unwrap basically extracts out the value of the option. Um, so here we can see it is just hello Brooks again. It's the full string. Now, if I were to return a none, so let's let's say that into hello, I passed in a none, we're going to get a none back. Now, this is perfectly valid code and compiles and Rust is not going to tell me that I'm about to run into a big crash. When I run this, ah, big honking crash here. So what happened? Well, we called an unwrap on a none value. The compiler says, well, uh, or the runtime, it's not the compiler, the runtime says, I don't know what's going on. This is not what it was expected. We're going down, goodbye. And then it just turns everything off. Sometimes that's exactly what you want. Uh, and sometimes it isn't. If you know for a fact that the, that the, un, um, that the unwrap will not cause a crash because you know it always has something in it, and you're just using the sum because the compiler just really, really wants you to use it, then um, for you know whatever reason, then yeah, you can go ahead and uh, and unwrap there. But almost always, it's a good idea to handle that error, or at the very least, turn it into some like official error out, so that way that can be handled somewhere else. And even if you're crashing, you get a good error response out of it. However, air handling is going to be a different video. So I'll see you in that one. Anyways, I'm hoping that uh, that this is uh, helpful and allows you to work with options a bit. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.